Why is pure card drafting so inherently addictive? Can you pair it with some pretty artwork and set collection to make a thing of beauty? I'm your narrator Benji and this is It's a Wonderful World. A one to five player game set in the near future where you're trying to build yourself an empire faster, bigger, stronger than your opponents can muster. It's all about the global domination. Employing said pure card drafting will see you picking a card from your hand and passing the remainder round to your neighbour. But it's what's on those multifunctional cards that will determine how to juggle the ones you pick. Because you see, each card can be retained for the purposes of constructing it and therefore reaping the production benefits in future turns or discarding it to gain an immediate resource to help you with your construction projects. The first few turns are all about taking what your starter card produces and tying that in with the cards available to you. The task at hand is in getting the resource production you need to enable you to build your engine and add more cards to your tableau. The quicker you can do that and the more synergistic you are with the victory point requirements found on said cards, the more likely you are to take home the spoils. However, there's an extra layer to all of this as the production phase takes place in sequential order. Everyone produces grey cubes before black and then green and so on down the five coloured resources. What this can mean is that you can produce, meet the requirements to build something and then produce off the back of it. And trust me when I say, every little helps. This all takes place over the course of a fairly swift four rounds and by now I'm sure we all know that points mean prizes. So why might you like it? Well, the game has a certain crispness about its moving parts. Its drafting element is a wonderful platform for the multifunctional cards that can give you an almost overwhelming choice to make until you realise you have to narrow your ambition, get some production cards queued and go all out to get those select few built. And when you consider the fact that this is well complemented in terms of adding strategic depth with the sequential nature of production, there is no such thing as wastage here, only suboptimal plays as unused resources get retained and ultimately cashed in for wild resources. There's certainly a lot to admire about the way everything flows from one phase of the turn to the next. Now because every facet of the game takes place simultaneously, from the car draft into the production, there is little to no downtime and the game zips along at a very welcome pace and even allows for a little bit of analysis paralysis without dragging the mood down. It's certainly no mean feat enabling this consistency in pacing, which only adds to how well it scales to player count. But why might you not like it? Well it's worth pointing out that the exceptional artwork gets somewhat cast aside in your obsession with resources. A lot of time is spent looking at the sides of the card that have a mechanical impact on the game, and not half as much at what your wonderful creation looks like. And without these thematic connections, it can magnify the rinse and repeat nature of the game. Finally, the solo variant is moderately inferior to the multiplayer one. As soon as you take the human element of the card drafting out of the game, there's less tension and excitement every time you're past a set of cards. God damn it, Ralph, I wanted blue resources, not this jank. But to be fair, mechanically speaking, it's not a bad set of solo rules. It's just its limitations in this regard are unavoidable. Ultimately, it's a game that brings a great deal of creativity and design polish to all of the subgenres represented, pitching the scales of its pacing and depth at just the right level. Until next time, however, this has been... It's a wonderful world in five minutes or less. Well, I think to myself, it's a wonderful...